Hello and good afternoon guys. Welcome to MK Convenience Brokerage. My name is Mohammed. Um, in this video, we're going to go over the DMV road test for road and test, should I say, part three. So this is chapter three, owning a vehicle. So uh, part one and part two were quite simple. Obviously, we were talking about how to get the license, uh, what timing scale you're allowed to drive, uh, some of the rules of registra registration, um, and all the stuff and all the good stuff should I put out. Uh, chapter three is going to be owning a vehicle. So whenever you own a vehicle, obviously we're going to go through it as well. So driver manual, this is for people. Again, if you haven't seen my first chapter one and chapter two introduction part, we're going to go over the driving test uh, questions and answers. We're going over the manual. You'll have other parts of the video. So if you feel like you're, you're weak in certain chapters, you could go to my video and check out what chapters you're weak at. You could go from there. So today we're going to go over chapter three. So what is a registration? So basically a registration is a, allows a vehicle to be driven on public roads and highway. Um, registration basically shows that a person at least um, you know like a certain age or over it in order to own the vehicle um, obviously sometimes titles also attached to the registration um, you know you can have a title of vehicle at any age it doesn't matter but uh, reg reg register vehicle you need to be at least 16 years to register a vehicle at least um, and you have to do it especially if you're a resident of the state of New York State like if you to get a car you need to have 30 days to establish a residence uh, keep that in mind a lot of people get confused in that part as well so registering registering a vehicle is really really simple um, you know as long as you show proof that yeah this you know the title and everything as long as you show that adequate what you need to be done you can go to the DMV and fill out an MV 82 form um, it's called the vehicle registration title application form once that phone is uh, form is done if you also have to show proof uh, six point of proof of uh, information you know that you know how you go to the DMV originally and you show your license um, and you get the you get whatever needs to be done the same exact thing for registration keep in mind the six points could be your license if you don't have your license remember the first time when you apply for your license you need the passport debit card all that good stuff make sure that adds up to six points so once you fill out the mv82 form you show your license um they you fill out what what the regular form and basically the old the dmv representative is going to ask you if it's given to you by a uh, gift or if it's sold to you those questions and that's just, that's how it basically register a vehicle in order for before you even register a vehicle you need insurance so keep that in mind always get the insurance before you go down there for registration um, once you're done with that, keep, then that's basically how, how it's supposed to be done. It's really simple. Um, if you purchase a vehicle from someone other than a New York State registr registr registered dealer, you will also receive a 10-day inspection extension sticker on request when you register a vehicle. You must have the vehicle inspected within 10 days from the date of registration. It should have a valid inspection sticker if you purchase the vehicle from a New York State registered dealer. The dealer must have the vehicle inspected within 30 days before they sell the vehicle to you. All these dates and time, you should be very, very careful because these are something they might ask you during the test. Proof of ownership, again, a title is ownership. Whenever you have a title, that means you're owner, you know, you own of, of the certain part. It could be a house, it could be a car, whatever it is. Um, if you purchase a vehicle from New York State registered dealer, again, a lot of people buy cars from dealership, proof of ownership of the vehicle or manufacturer certificate of origin. They give you, like a lot of dealers, we give you a certificate of origin or, or if they don't have a title, they give you that as well, MV50 form. That really uh, shows that what, what's, what's going on and everything. So the previous owner certificate title, MV999, is also the correct odometer and everything. That's also used as well. Uh, but the MV50 form is, is some, a lot of times you get that from the dealer. You need that to fill out as well. Um, the MV82 form, again, it's a, it's a it's a form that you usually have to fill out for the registration, insurance, and everything else. So they'll give you that own form, or you could just go online and get that form as well. But you do need that. So if you do get it from a, a you know, like the a previous title from the owner, you need MV999 form, um, and you need to transfer that title to you. A lot of times people, like when they sell the vehicle, they give you the title. And you could use that title, flip it over, write down the information, and basically your information, get it notarized, and that's how it is. But a lot of times they might use that as well. Um, um, proof of sales tax payment. That's very important. When you go to the DMV and you purchase a vehicle, a lot of times they might ask you, is it is like over here, it tells you over here, is it a sale or gift of the motor vehicle? If somebody sells it to you, you might have to pay tax on it as well. So always keep in mind, whenever you buy a vehicle, if it's, if it's not a gift, if it's sale to you, you might have to pay tax. Now, how much tax it is, depending on how much the vehicle was sold to you. If the vehicle was sold to you for $10,000, they have a calculation by $10,000, whatever the sale tax is supposed to be, approximation, maybe $500 you might have to pay or even more than that depends so they have a way of doing so if it was a gift um you know by someone who's not a family member it, it works out as well 
as long as it's not a family member, a friend could have gift, uh, give a gift to another friend so he could use that as well. Uh, again, proof insurance. I was very, very, you know, uh, honest with you on before that. You, whenever you register a vehicle, then you need insurance first. That insurance, without that insurance, you won't be able to register a vehicle. So insurance is going to be now done first. Once you buy the car from the dealership, you need insurance. A lot of times, dealership will provide you with insurance. You don't have to worry about that. Fees, um, again, registration. Uh, they charge you different fees as well. Uh, the only thing you need to know is uh, basically like with this part over here. If your vehicle plate registration sticker or return unused within 60 days after you register your vehicle, you can receive a full refund minus a processing fee. So this part you should know that at least you have up to 60 days, you know, to, re you know, to give everything back and you get the whole refund for that. But again, a lot of times people don't think about it. And you do need the FS6 sticker to turn in your plates. Oh, this is the thing that I always tell some of my students if you don't need the car give up your plates Basically until you have plates you need to pay your insurance the moment you don't pay insurance You have a lapse in coverage. That means your license gets suspended on point you get suspended you get you get arrested So that's very important for people to know that you have to surrender the plates in order for you to keep you know not, not have your driving privileges stable uh, people think that you know what I don't want to deal with it I don't want to pay you know I don't want to um, you know give up my FS uh, you know give up my plates why should I do it I want to keep it I want to keep the car I don't care I don't pay for insurance I can drive yeah you could drive but once you get pulled over after like I think certain amount of days that they believe it's like 60 to 90 days I believe something like that your your license your your, your registration gets suspended the first something something they penalize your car they penalize you, you know, for that, for the car and everything else because they try to go after that, the vehicle. Uh, but then after a certain amount of time, they'll go after the owner of the car and, you know, that's another thing. Uh, people don't know. Um, registration renewal, again, most registration are renewed every two years, approximately 45 to 60 days before your registered will expire. You should receive a renewal reminder in the mail. So DMV is kind enough to remind you as well. Um, if you have email, that's even better. They might send you an email notice, which is even easier. Um, expiration date falls on a weekend or re legal state. So basically, the, you'll be able to renew it. You could complete an MV82 form, go over to DMV, fill it out. You could do it online. Uh, check you uh, be doing on the on uh, by mail. You just have to fill it out. Make sure you send a check on money order. If you go in person, it's, it's even you know it might be easier for some people. Um, so that's one thing. Insurance. The minimum liability coverage of is fifty. Uh, it's twenty five thousand dollars per person. Fifty thousand dollars per accident. So fifty thousand dollars against one person. Hundred thousand dollars against two or more person. Five hundred thousand. Fifty thousand dollars against injury two or more person. What that basically means is, put it simple. Whenever you buy a car, those of you that have a vehicle, the minimum minimum state requirement is twenty five fifty. So twenty five thousand dollars per person. Fifty thousand dollars per accident. That basically means that if you if you end up, uh, you know getting somebody damaged with bodily injury, they want to get some money compensation, the company pays up to $50,000. So that's what it basically means. Uh, and if they're obviously dead, then that's 100000 as well. So you could always hire the limit. What I tell my clients is this, if you have houses under your name, you have properties, do me a favor, either get a higher liability limit on the car insurance, like get a hundred, like $500,000 per person, a million dollar per accident or something like that, get a higher liability limit, or have an umbrella policy to protect yourself. The problem with that is if you do not have an umbrella policy, or if you have a lower limit, they will come after your assets. If you do not have assets, then obviously they can't do anything about you. But again, if you're working for a government employee job, if you're working for sanitation, uh, police police department, fire department, et cetera, et cetera, they could come after you. And you don't want to be that person that they come after and then you know you, you they're suing you for that. So always keep that in mind. A resident and non-resident responsibility. Again, there's people that drive uh, you know, vehicle in a resident or non-resident situation. Um, just keep that in mind. We need, they, their, their minimum insurance requirement might be different than ours. Um, their uh, driving privileges not be the same as New York State. So we just have to go through them what they, what's going on. Uh, inspection. Now, we all know in New York State, cars have to get inspected. So there's a safety inspection and registration as well. Registration is every two years. There's also a safety inspection that has to be done as well. And most New York sold in uh, most vehicles sold in New York State must be inspected within 30 days of the date of transfer or sale, and must have a certificate of inspection before delivery. So you have it for 30 days for the date of transfer. If you purchase a vehicle from someone who is not a New York State dealer, you you must have the vehicle inspected within 10 days. So if you buy for a private person, you have 10 days to get the vehicle inspected. So keep that in mind. You need all that information. 
um, going towards certain complaint against business again you can always have a complaint against dealer whatever it is the DMV regulates motor vehicle dealers inspection stations and auto repair shops these business should be identified by registration or other other information as well or license on our side signs you'll know it if you have if you have to make a complaint this is the number to call 518-474-8943 between 830 to 415 and they'll do what they have to be done so with that being said we'll go over chapter four in another video chapter four again it's going to be about rules regulation about you know go stop sign and everything else uh, uh chapter five we'll go over intersection and turns but we want to go chapter each chapter at a time so you'll probably have an understanding what's going on um if you guys have any other questions common concern please comment like subscribe i'll try my best to help you as much as possible try to memorize the dates try to memorize the, the 60 days the 30 days and stuff like that i understand it's sometimes hard to remember but these are the questions they might ask you during the dmv test and that you don't want to get tripped on um thank you again guys for watching this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it